see the number of people living on the streets of coastal communities has exploded in the last couple of years. Something Councilman Mike Bonin has been trying to solve, but now he's stepping aside. Two lawyers are vying to replace him in the November election. Aaron Darling finished first among eight candidates in the June primary with almost 35% of the vote. Tracy Park is his opponent. She finished second with 29% of the vote. The winner of this race will represent communities from Pacific Palisades down to LAX. Tracy Park joins us here in studio tonight. We hope Aaron Darling will join us soon. Aaron Darling is backed by Mike Bonin. Uh, so for folks that like what Mike Bonin has been doing, he's the guy. You're offering something different. Yes. You get in there. What specifically do you do differently than Mike Bonin? And what does that mean for people in places like Venice that are fed up with the homeless? Well, it's a great question, and I think that it is time that we address this with the compassionate urgency that the circumstances require. This is a public health and safety crisis that we have on our hands, and the patchworks of encampments all over Venice and the entire west side are not working for anyone. Our communities, our schools, our local businesses and certainly not for the people who are living in them. We are going to have to implement some shorter term emergency solutions to get people into safe settings and connected with the support and services that they need. We're gonna need to start with some safe camping and parking locations and then move to shelter options, uh, transitional housing, shared housing, modular construction, adaptive reuse of existing infrastructure so that we can begin the process of offering people a place to go and clearing these encampments from our communities. How do you do that when we've seen this time and time again when so many people are content where they are and they don't want to move? How do you get them to? So I think it's really important that we get more granular about who is in the population that we're trying to serve and then investing in programs and solutions that will incentivize them to take the help that we're offering. You know, for a long time, we haven't really done anything to distinguish about the different levels of acuity and backgrounds and kinds of needs of people on the streets. Women who are victims of domestic violence require a different kind of supportive environment than veterans and seniors. And we need to create interventions and solutions that address those unique needs and circumstances. Where do you put some of those temporary uh, places? Because as you know, a lot of people love the concept that the homeless should go somewhere, but just not near my house, right? And you see opposition uh, from people, even that are sort of liberal Democrats, not wanting the homeless right in front of them. So how do you deal with that nimbyism? So I think one of the big issues that we've had is our council member has failed to keep promises to local communities, particularly Venice. And the failures around the Venice Bridge home really are the bright shining reason why nobody trusts local government to manage this problem. One of the very first things I'm going to do as our council member is keep those promises to the community. I have a lot of work to do to restore trust between the constituents and residents of the district and the council office. And I'm going to begin that process by engaging with communities, collaborating with them, and working with them to create the solutions that we're going to need to see across the district and frankly across the entire city to address this issue. Of course, this is personal for you because you being a resident of Venice, a homeless shelter moved in literally across from your home. How did that change your perspective? Well, in light of the significant problems that we saw around the Venice Bridge home, I had grave concerns about those failures being repeated in yet another residential neighborhood with five preschools and two elementary schools located nearby. We made a number of different proposals to the council office, including going straight to permanent supportive housing, making it housing for seniors 55 and up, families with children, sober living, and every single one of those ideas was rejected with no, no explanation. Mm -hmm. And that is really in, indicative of the council office's overall approach to how communities have been treated in addressing this crisis. So if you get in there, you'd be with a new mayor. You have abstained from endorsing <laughs> Rick Caruso or Karen Vasse. Both of them are good. But if, if, you know, election ultimately is a, is a choice between you and your opponent. What is the one biggest difference for people that are actually voting if you get in there versus Aaron Darling that actually affects their lives? So 
You know, I feel like for a long time we've had an ideologue in the seat that was promoting his own agenda over the needs of the community. And I'm concerned that we're going to see more of that with his endorsed candidate, my opponent, Aaron Darling. Um, it's really important that, you know, we have somebody who is willing to roll up their sleeves, do the hard work of problem solving and bringing solutions online quickly. All right, Tracy Park, again, Council uh, District 11, uh, and we hope that Aaron Darling will join us as well and share his perspective. Really appreciate you coming in. Thanks for Obviously, having me. Thank you for being here. It's such a big issue. It is.